right. We have a lot of games to talk about in the news today because they're starting to talk about Essen releases. That'll okay. come out the Essen Spiel. But first, we have to talk about this ubiquitous piece of gaming, the Meeple. There's a lot of words in this. Yes. Tom's been reading. I know. Right? I have no idea what most of these, most of these words are. By Did the you way. get a book on tables, huh? Did you? <laughs> you have a calendar? Word of the day. All right. Anywho. Ubiquitous. <laughs> so the Meeple, I don't want to get too into the weeds on this because it's all over the internet, but the Meeple is obviously best known for Carcassonne and was introduced in the game of Carcassonne. Yes. They were called Followers. Somebody shortened it, my people, to Meeple in a blog or something, and they just started, over the internet, started getting called Meeples, and then Meeple became very popular. Right. People started using the word Meeple in the name of podcasts and board game companies and even board game names to the point of sometimes where it's like we roll our eyes at it. Right. Because it's... Anyway, it's yes. just weird. Yeah. Yes, sometimes I roll my eyes, yes. And the Jeeple and uh, oh, yeah. all the other nonsense. Anyhow, uh, Meeple Inc. was a game on uh, GameFound, a campaign, and I believe we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got a, uh, they rebranded, their their publisher was Kagito Ergo Meeple, but now they're called Tabletop Inc. Um, well, the game is called Tabletop Inc., and the company is now called Cotswold Games because they got a cease and desist from Hans and Gluck saying, hey, we own the copyright to Meeple, which they purchased a few years ago in Germany and possibly the EU. So, right. anywho, some news sites have made a big deal about this. Hans and Gluck is not backing down. I don't know what this means for publishers with the word Meeple in their title, or games already, I mean, there's like 40 <laughs> games with the word Meeple in. <clears throat> yeah, I don't yeah. know. The problem with that is, as soon as they start defending it, they kind of have to defend it, don't they? Isn't right. That Where do you stop? You yeah, know, you, you have go. to keep going now. Sometimes yeah. companies send out cease and desist letters, they fire them off, and then they don't follow up on it. Sure. You know, that. I mean, that happens. It's like a thing. You send it off, and you are protecting your copyright. Um, anyhow... Uh, I don't know what will happen here. I suspect that you'll just see fewer games with the word Meeple in, in the future. I'd say some people just move on without trying to, like, okay, we use something different. I'm just wondering what the blowback for this is going to be, be, you know? I don't think it will translate into That's... anything, honestly, because what are people going to stop buying Carcassonne and its ilk? I mean, that sells to the masses who don't really care about Meeple anyway. Um... No, you just wonder if it's going to come off as petty or if it's going to come off as protective. You know, it can go either way. I don't know in that situation if I was Hans and Kluck what I would do. I mean, I might have defended it 15 years ago. Seems like an odd time to start now. I will say some of these trademark things are pretty funny. There's a guy in Canada, his name is Michael Rowe, he made a little software company, and he calls it Mike Rowe Soft. And he said, like, it took four days for lawyers to show up and be like, you can't do that. He's like, I, I figured. <laughs> you know, he kind of knew. He's like, okay, I'm not really going to fight That's this That's interesting, one. yeah. <laughs> you know? it's like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It does seem, again, like you said, they've had the, the copyright in Germany to the word meeple for a while, right? I it has know. been a while. They did not yeah. just get this paperwork pushed I through. I think it was a few years ago. Okay, a few years I've never heard of them issuing anybody else to cease and desist, and no. oh my goodness, all you got to do is kick a rock, and there's something named Meeple under there. In well, the this did, make two, this did raise 230000 Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that was the difference, you know? Um, my point being, if they do start defending it, they're, they, you need to now defend it, or you are Pick allowing the usage of it. That mess it. I'm no lawyer, but I think if you don't defend it, it starts to become okay to use it. There's some right. There's some fair use stuff in America. Yeah. I don't know how all of it works, and so we are not lawyers, so I don't. I got my lawyer degree from altavista.com, so <laughs> take from that what you will. I'm dogpile. All righty. Let's talk about the Origins Awards. They were in, So the nominations came out two weeks ago, and then they were announced this week, or last week at Origins uh, Game Fair. The so winners. The winners were announced. I'm not going to go over the nominees, but I will say I applaud Origins for having fairly good nominations. We have criticized them in the past. Their 2023 nominations last year were a train wreck. Um, and uh, and there have been years in the past where they, they're laughable, right? They've been doing this for a really long time. 
Anywho, um, this year they're better. They still had an expansion in one of the board game categories, which was weird. Okay. But anyhow, they don't have a best game of the year, by the way. They just they have just different categories. So best cooperative Here game. Here we go. Okay, okay. Sky Team. That's okay. a good pick. Yeah. That's I a agree. good pick. Best gateway board game, yes. Wandering Towers. There it is. That's a good pick. Yeah, Joey just drop loves the mic pick. now. Drop I, the mic. Either they are you actually using the word gateway. I thought we were trying to move away from that term as a whole. Welcoming game. Well, they they're not going to use that. No, okay, I will come after you if you use welcoming game. Cease My desist. season desist letters are ready to go. <laughs> That's ours. That's right. our word. Best light strategy game. Strategy, you said? Do we have a... Light no, strategy. We, okay, we don't have that one. Leaf. That's okay, that's a game. It is. Did you play that one? No. Great yeah, components. Yeah. Well, yes. it depends. Remember, it's the oh, nice wooden point. ones. If you get the yeah. deluxe, it comes with actual leaves. <laughs> Best thematic board game, Freelancers, a crossroads game. That's oh. a good pick. Best heavy strategy. Now, this is a bad pick. Dune Imperium Uprising. And I would say it's a bad pick because that game already exists. Oh. Yeah. It's Doom Imperium. It's, it's almost the same game. Uh, I don't know. It's With a good pick, though. It's a good worms. It's better than them giving it to something that doesn't fit the category. That's good. I'm happy with it so far. What else they got? Best party Maybe social board is. game, Smug Owls. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. See? This is what I was afraid of. <laughs> what is this? I don't know. I'll have it tomorrow. I need to know. Well, you are... The reason they keep giving out these awards. <laughs> you reward these picks. Best solo board game, Legacy of You. Okay. Best okay. children and family board game, Diced Veggies. That's, I like that one. Man, there's a bunch of stuff we don't care about. You know, CCG RPGs. Um, best uh, 2D artwork. Uh, this cracks me up every time that they call it that. They don't do best art and best minis. They do best 2D art. And, and then best, best 3D, 3D component. Okay, no. okay. <laughs> anyway, best uh, 2D art is uh, Quan Chi Mori's Empire's End art. Okay. And then the best media production, which we were not nominated for. Why? Um, well, I'll get to that in a second. Man, but season assist. But <laughs> Elena's uh, Making Board Games, a CG documentary eight-part series. That was very well done. Okay, cool. She did a great job on that. I have not seen that. And I'm glad that beat that. out the other nominees. I, th I think it wasn't even close, right? Yeah. But, so you, just to note, to be in Origins, you, the awards, you have to submit your game. You have to send in a certain number of <clears throat> copies or it's not even considered. So, like, Earth wasn't even on the nomination list. Oh, wow. Things like that. They also did a fan favorite game where the fans just voted for their favorite game or whatever at Origins. From that year. No, at, well, at Origins. And it was distilled. So... All right. Cool. Okay. So that's the Origins Awards. Like I said, not not bad. Not yeah. bad. Definitely better than the dumpster fire it's been in the past. Don't hold back. Oh, wow. Well. Oh, All right. Here we go. Game time. Okay. This is almost nothing. It's just a sneak peek at something from Parks. There's a new Parks thing coming. There's some artwork. That's Wait. all we know. Parks Parks? Yeah, what does that mean? How do this that's doesn't not, look like the artwork from that's Parks? That's not Parks. That's new artwork. It's from Andrea Dumuta. Wait, we're talking like Parks Parks. The board Key game Master. Parks, yes. Yeah, I know, in the world of Parks. I'm like, that's our world. <laughs> you can't keep taking parts of Earth and claiming them as your own what do you cinematic mean? universe. Countries have been doing that for that, decades. That broken ankle bear is bothering me, man. That's... In fact, it... it it healed wrong. <laughs> All right. That's exactly wrong. Let's move on. Poor baby. We got some space games here. Beyond Horizon. This one looks really cool. Whoa, it was board. It was crowdfunded, uh, but this is a, I, I say but, this is probably Joey's back this game. This is a Joey? print and play. Then I have backed it. <laughs> it was under $5. It? Do you, are you remember it? Yeah. Remember hitting the back It was button? crowdfunded in March. I don't remember talking about it, but... Anyway, it looks really cool, though. It looks really cool. I really like how that board looks. That is neat. Looking. Print and play, though, man. That's a lot of ink. That board looks a little bit like La Isla. Who's she? All right. Beyond the Event Horizon, which is not based on the horrific movie... I like that, That too. Sam Neill's in. 
Uh, you watch oh. your mouth. That's a cult classic. Uh, have you seen it? No. Joe, you've never seen Event Horizon. By the way, you're both talking about it. Now I need to see it because no. you don't think I should see it. You no. like horror movies? I like it's horror or space. Yeah, it's they go find a spaceship, horror. and then it's okay. like turns into the Event Horizon has been lost in space for 13 years. Okay, <laughs> it it was supposed to be a black hole tunneling ship, and it vanished, but it never reappeared. And 13 years later, we get a ping from deep space. So we're sending a ship out to go see what happened. Wait, how recently Where have you seen this? Where has the event horizon been all these years? Ninety-seven. It's great. Do you really like it? It's one of the best movies ever made. <laughs> you never can tell. It's kind of like Hellraiser mixed with a space movie. <laughs> really? I'm not kidding. And it's Sam Neill. Yeah, that's enough said. <laughs> I'm Morpheus in. is in it. And what? what? <laughs> this movie is not beyond about that. This is a. Uh, a 4X game, unfortunately, from this picture and everything else, it's really hard to tell, like, what's different about this game. That looks like a cheap Twilight Imperium. And I, I, I got to be careful because it might be amazing. I'm not trying to, to knock it. But you are going through a black hole <laughs> in uncharted space. And then you're, this is coming, this was crowdfunded, and it's coming out first half of 2025. That's far enough away. Let's move on. <laughs> I love how the chat is all like, it's a good movie, and it's not so good. The whole chat is, <laughs> they're arguing back and forth. I want my time back. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what I did? I saw it on TV, did not know it was a horror movie. Ooh. I saw it, and I was like, space, this is great. This looks neat. What is going on? <laughs> that person's eyes are missing. <laughs> That's was... like definitely like, yeah, supposedly there's like a, an unrated <laughs> cut that exists out there that is like very, very hardcore. Really? It's already pretty, like, not gnarly, yeah. Oh, I will be watching that. All right. AI, 100% human. <laughs> um, a while back, right? This is a drafting game. This was crowdfunded in May, so it's coming out okay. this November. So you are a human, and you are playing an AI. You're playing six random AI cards. You have to I've see played who, this game. I played a prototype of this. You have to be the person who best impersonates an AI. I don't know what the theme is. The theme is. Uh, oh, you played this at West, right? Yeah. No. Yes. I don't know. I'm asking you. I'm asking myself. Uh, no, I played this at Essen. Did you like it? Yeah, I like it a lot. Actually, it's a great game. It's got um. It's that positional thing. It's that idea of you play a card that has to. It's kind of like Reef. The card could be scored off of, but you're setting up future scoring opportunities. And I thought it did okay. that thing really, really well. Where you have to play a card, it goes into your pattern or whatever, and then you score like this row. Great. Boom. I get some points from that. And so you've got the hand management, you've got the pattern building. It's not a looker because the whole card is informational. So there's no artwork on it. You know, the cards do look like that. And I do think, unfortunately, that that title, especially with AI being a hot topic right now, is is not going to do the game any favors. Right. It could have been pretty much about anything. I, I, it has that feeling it's of like, famous. you know, yeah. But the gameplay, like the card manipulation and stuff, I thought was great. It's really, really a fun game. It's just thematically, don't think about it too hard. All right. Then we have Wednesday, Creatures and Outcasts. This is a game coming from MNKY uh -huh. Entertainment. Okay. Two to six players are playing cards. You're trying to get rid of your cards. It sounds like a that game we just played recently, the Pig Pile. That one we played, not Coyote, the other one we played. Oh, yeah, Monkey, monkey something. Yeah. Hungry Monkey. Hungry Monkey. It sounds oh, a little bit yeah. like that. It's interesting. I asked Mike why there was two covers. He didn't know why there was two. I hope they used the bottom one. I agree. The bottom one, I mean, the top one doesn't look, isn't bad, actually, but that bottom one looks like a board game. The bottom one is not going to get used if they can use the top one at all. There's no way. The top one looks like the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That Why would they sacrifice that? Yeah, you're right. Montana, Kentucky is, is the company. I don't really <laughs> know what the MNKY is. It probably means something. All right. This next one I'm very interested in. It's Evil Dead 2. Yes. 1%, a groovy game of strategic chance. Back out. Now, I'm not interested in the Evil Dead 2 part. Um, I know a lot of people love that movie, but... 
Great this movie. is a new edition of a game called 1%, a game yeah. of strategic chance. Have you played it? No, I read about it the other day. I don't know why I fell down this rabbit hole, but... but have you heard? Have you heard I went and looked it? at it. It sounds really interesting. So the way you win the game is you roll 100 sided dice or two tens, and you need to get 100. So you have a 1% chance of winning. Okay. Or you try to increase your chances to win. It sounds like that the wizard always wins game. That way back in the day, that, that one you, you had to pull a wizard from the bag. Okay. But you did different things to make your pulls better. Got it. It sounds really interesting, and it has fairly, it only has a few ratings, and it came out in 2022. Okay. But it has pretty high ratings. People said it was really fun. That, that concept intrigues me. Yeah, I think it's a neat concept. I think that's why I kind of was checking it out, because it sounded interesting. From what I saw, it was basically two halves stitched together, and the one half is Liar's Dice. You yes. get eliminated, you get eliminated, eliminated, until finally mm -hmm. you have, you're down to a single person, and then that person can either increase their odds by getting, I don't know, oh, now, now I can hit ones or zeros or ones or threes or whatever. Or you roll. You get a bonus roll. It sounded really slow. From the, I, I read somebody's review on BGG, and they were like, it's, it's so slow. The two halves don't have anything to do with one another. But I don't know. It's Evil Dead 2, so Joey's going to play it. I am. <laughs> That's true, you are. I am. Um, so this is, uh, what's the company here? I Iconic Studios. All right. That is Evil coming. Dead. Oh, and Yellow is going to bring out a French version of this, so maybe they'll bring the English version too. I like that top one. The look of that top one is cool. Actually, the French version is already out. They said June 22nd. That was already. That was like a week ago. All right. <gasps> Get it. In news that surprises no one, there's another zombie side coming based oh, no. on the campy Army of the Dead movie that, that's the Zack Snyder movie, right, on uh, Netflix. This, this game has been kind of in, like, development limbo for a little bit, Hasn't. actually. Because this game got announced when the movie came out, around that time. You're right, I remember that now. Yeah. And it's just sort of been, we more. don't know where. You know what I mean? It was supposed to come straight to retail. It was sort of lingering and waiting. We weren't sure what was happening. So I guess there's some development now. What more details? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh Huh. But did you get it? I'm there's a lot of mosquitoes it. around here today, folks. They got it in the house somehow. Anyhow, um, it doesn't say it was announced in 2021. You're right. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's hitting the retail market Different on July 19th. Then. Let's go. That's about a month. Well, if ever he... there was a movie that was made for Zombie Side, <laughs> though, this I'm movie. not kidding. Yes. He says it's going to Kickstarter. Or no, 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 no. This was always coming out just straight up. I wonder if there will wow. be zombie tigers in it. I believe there is a zombie so, tiger in it, yes. All right, this is a standalone. It looks like modern-day 2.0 style, right? Yes. Probably. It's probably the same rules and everything. You can read the rule book right now online, I'm pretty I sure. I hope he took some, like, Wild West stuff in there, some of the Old West I stuff. I don't from. remember, honestly, Joey. I know mm. I Have read it and I was aware yeah. of it. Yeah, I like the movie. It's not. I don't like it zombie movies, and it was, it was fine. It had Batiste with glasses. It really did. <laughs> I was like, that's all I need. All right, so speaking ah. of zombies, Button Shy is in the zombie market. They had a game called Walking Dead Surround It in May 2024. Ooh. And then there's an expansion coming out, Walking Dead Surround It Under Siege, a six-card <gasps> expansion. Joey, Joey knows about Under Siege. I do. <laughs> I do. Another great movie. Great's a strong word. <laughs> Another strong one of his movies. Word. So there's this train that got lost 13 years <laughs> the ago. <laughs> the disease too. All right. He's a chef. Oh. Which one's the first one? The ship one? The ship. They take a battleship. Okay. That's the one with the Gary uh, Busey. Busey just going totally insane. They in the weren't movie. expecting the cook. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the next one here, Tree Society. This is coming from Next Move Games. It does not have a four-letter title like their games have had in the past. Not, right? Azul Reef. I guess they kick that out. Nice cover. This is from Matthew Dunson and Brett Gilbert, a combo you tend to like. I do. They actually, their last game, or one of their last games was the Guild of Merchant Explorers, which just got yeah. nominated for the Kenner Spiel. Anyway, you are helping various guilds follow blueprints to make new buildings, S take advantage of other players to sell your resources at the best price, and earn the favor of new guilds by skillfully combining their powers. It's coming in October, so as an release. It's very pretty. Then we have Enori. This is from 
Matthew, Albert, and Theo Rivera, and Space <clears throat> Cowboys. So this is in Inori Valley. Uh, you're making offerings to the tree spirits, yada, yada, yada. You're trying to get favorite tokens. Uh, I don't know. It sounds very generic. But it looks cool. It's Space Cowboys, and they have a very high hit rate with me. Yeah, as does I like their stuff. Theo, I like his games too. So. Yeah, Tail, Tail Riviere is a Tail, that's what it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's a good designer. That game, I got to tell you, just looking at the image, I am like not exi excited whatsoever for that game. But really? I love how that looks. Really? Yeah. It looks... It's colorful. I'm in. Yeah. It's that blurry. looks like a place setting for a plate of food. I'm mm. like, okay. Now I'm hungry, and I want to play the game. <laughs> uh, anyway, no, I'm sure it'll be neat. They do good stuff. This next game also looks interesting to me. It's called Fairy Ring. So Fairy Ring is a two to four player game coming from Repos. Uh, Lawrence Grenier and Fabian Tangi are doing it. And there's, you are magic coming back to the forest. You need to make a mushroom thing. It looks like you're growing the mushrooms with cards. I don't know what it is. That like mechanism that. always makes me happy when you use up the build a tower. Things, yeah. I like that too. I just like it. I mean, bad company mushroom. As I say, bad company. It's so stupid in that game, so and yet it great. abuses me every single time. I yeah. agree. This looks like a light game. This looks like a spiel. You're a right. Spiel bait. Oh my goodness, spiel bait. <laughs> just like we have Oscar bait for movies, there is spiel bait. This is one of them. Yeah. All right, zoomies. Is a game coming out from Magnus Carlson and Fireside Games. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, jeez. Uh, so I looked up Zoomies. Uh, I, I, I started to see this online more. Zoomies is that burst. It's like a dog when it has that burst of energy. Like dog you never heard of the Zoomies? That's really not a thing you knew about? No, I wasn't. Joey? Yeah. yeah. You knew about it. When the puppy will just run and he'll just jump off the back of the couch and just do it. Yeah, you. they get like sort of like... Just got to get their ah! Zoomies out. <laughs> and they just go, <laughs> and you're like, and then all you need to do if they do stop, all you got to do is go, <laughs> and they take the dog. Yeah, they like, just, well, your dogs are. Yeah, but when you're like sitting on the couch, yeah. and you're reading a book, and it yeah. happens, and yeah. sometimes it can scare the snot out of you. You're yeah, like, what's up? Sure. Here's the thing. Your dogs are big. If that's they do the the zoomies, thing. you'll have to move. No, yeah, they run like, right up me. Yeah, that's like, like, <laughs> like, a, like a, a ramp. This is a more of a little dog be allowed to do this. Yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. <laughs> anyway, in this game, you're walking your pups at the park. I don't even know why it's called zoomies because you're walking dogs at the park. They're walking you eventually, I guess. <laughs> anyway, it's from Fireside, so a family style game for sure. That Greyhound neck is just fantastic. There's, <laughs> there's so much to unpack in that cover. All right, we'll talk about covers. Look at this next one Animal Rules Football. <laughs> this is from Martin Wallace. <laughs> and. There's only one game in Animal Kingdom, and that is, is football. It football. Football, but it's a mix of soccer and rugby, yeah, which I be. think is yeah. football. I'm not, <laughs> sure. I'm not sure. Oh, they, they play it on a cricket pitch too. Okay. Anyway, there's six Australian animals, and they have their strengths and weaknesses. Here's the thing: it's probably a pretty good game because I think Mark Wallace excels at these medium weight style sure, games. Sure. But that it's just I such am. a weird name and everything else. Nah, man. Pass. <laughs> That's look at weird. That. It's just weird. It looks like they're doing a the tip-off in basketball, doesn't it? Yeah. I it's like, like a that weird, cover, like, though. hardcore kangaroo and some kind of rooster. That's a werewolf, man. That's a, I don't know what I'm looking at. And it, it makes me uncomfortable, honestly. What's it's, the thing to his right? Is that, is that a rooster? Oh, it is. Yeah. yeah it's well, they're, a, no, they're, no, it's got to be... The animals are... That's probably a cockatoo. There's koalas, oh, cockatoos, right. kangaroos, they're all dingoes. Okay. Um, there's like, there's six animals, but they're all Australian animals. Why? Why? Okay, my wife That's where mean. he's from. Because they're from the New most, Zealand, I think, actually. But. Uh, they're the most deadly? <laughs> I guess. This is weird. All right, Landmarks. This is a communication game, which just showed up in the mail yesterday for us, actually. Ooh, well, um, right. It's a game of hidden paths and clever clues. I like it. So you're trying to give... One word clues to get people to follow the right connection. Sounds like party games that already exist, but I don't know. We'll have to give it a try and see. The front, that box front and box back, that's sort of what the box back looks like. I would not guess one from the other. <laughs> no. Yeah. From Floodgate Games. That's a good cover, though. It will get people to pick it up, I think. Yeah. This is a Gen Con release, I believe. That's if good. then, this is a cooperative game coming from Arcane Wonders and Scott Brady. 
who is definitely becoming the king of light games right now. Yeah. Um, it's cooperative pattern solving. One person has a hint and will tell people whether their guesses are right or wrong. They're going to put a card from display and put it in the thing. So it sounds like Zendo with cards. Hints are based on the size, value, and or color of the number and background. Higher level cards and more complex hints. So it really sounds like a Zendo card game. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Asian Tigers, a story of prosperity. This is uh, a new design from Nuno Bizarro Santiro and Paulo Soledad. And it's from Pythagoras. That's a cool cover. I like that cover a lot. This almost looks like it would be in the smartphone line, kind yeah. of. has that yeah. same kind of cover. Yeah, it but does. It is a, but good job, Pythagoras. You went from that making some good. pretty bad covers to really... Swinging around in the covers. Yeah, it's, that's a stunning yeah. looking game. Like I want to pick that up. And, and you've liked you like a lot of their games that came out last year. Pythagoras. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, Asian that's tigers good. have policies and blah 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 blah. Yeah, it looks really interesting. Yeah, wow, that's nice. Moving day. This is a cute little game from Piatnik and day. Mads Flo, the designer. Uh, it's moving day in Quebec, Canada. And um, July 1st is moving day. It says it's no joke as more than 100,000 people move on this day. Starting in the 1700s, by law, all leases would expire on the same day. Is this like a thing? That's really? a thing. Yeah, it's a real thing. Wow. Still? Yeah. I thought they called it Boxing Day. Well, Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. Okay, well then moving day. Yes, but no, I've heard of this. It's a My real thing. Jake Paul that sounds... Fine, that sounds horrible. Yeah, yeah, like I'd be like, thing. I a, sure hope I'm sick that day. There's several games. <laughs> I know, yeah. That's... There's several games already based on this there idea of like it's always Canada. That's how I knew it was a Canadian thing, because the games that have this theme of like everyone's moving. That's always the setting's always Canada. So it's like, oh, that's a real thing in Canada. Yeah, that's the worst time to have a truck there this time. I, I, I want to hear. We from... gotta have some Canadians in the chat. Like, is this a, is, it, is this a terrible day in Canada? It's got to be. Great day for U-Haul, though. Yeah, because you'd be asked, you'd be like, hey, you want to help me move? Like, well, Bob already asked me. He's going to give me pizza yeah. afterward. What, what do you got? You do? <laughs> Keep raising your price? You go around yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. All right, anyway, the game looks interesting. It looks like a light game. You're just trying to stack cards in your truck. Okay, like stack of stuff, I guess. Vegas Showdown is being reprinted from Renegade. This, this is... I need to figure out what's going on here. I, I saw some pictures of this. This came out from Mayfair Games mm -hmm. back in the... No. Sorry, I, I'm mixing it up with Vegas. Vegas Showdown is different than... than I'm, I'm thinking of the Mike Selinker game. I'm mixing it up. Sorry. Vegas Showdown is a game I like a lot. A ton. That cover is weird. <laughs> I, I just want to know one answer. Is there paper mats in it? I assume or are they that boards? they're no longer paper. I'd have to assume they're no longer paper. It's the one thing everyone complained about. Um, it says it has brand new artwork and graphic design upgrades with the I same don't... great gameplay. The artwork and graphic design, uh, yeah, maybe the graphic design is good. It was already good, but this artwork I'm not so sure about. Also, the game's not about gambling in a casino. This is a misleading cover. You want a cover that tells you a little bit about what you're likely doing in that game, right? Slightly, there's blueprints in the background. Oh, uh, it looks like, no, that looks like somebody's planning a theft. It does. <laughs> oh, heist. you're right. You know yeah. what I mean? Nah, nah, nah. Yeah. The game's about building out Vegas, building a, a casino and putting restaurants in it and putting the slot machines over here and the... It's not about okay. this. Okay, I will say, I've not played this. Did not get that from the cover. That is very You've never played this? No. You've got to play Vegas Showdown. It's a great game. You I, have to, you animal. You must. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I had, but I apparently have not, because the one I played was a betting game. All right, and then finally, <laughs> Mike wrote more Kana. Lore Kana. There's more Lore Kana coming here. Oh. Uh, this is Shimmering Skies. I believe this is the... Uh, Fifth set? Yeah, the fifth set here. Wreck-It Ralph! Yeah, Where? man, we have finally defeated Ursula's return. And now Lorcana is dealing with the ramifications of what she tried to do. That sounds like Z made that up, but that's actually correct. 
That is not Wreck-It Ralph. That is Maui, by the way. No, Wreck-It Ralph is in it now. Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, fine. The little girl, and then the bad guy from Wreck-It Ralph. This is debuting Ralph August 9th. Face. Mass market August 23rd. How much you want to bet it's at Gen Con? Oh, oh. They also have a new... Oh, no. Lorcan is also coming out with a new thing. They Every now and then they come up with one new, like, I don't know, not product line, but like one new item. And the new thing is a, a learn to play. Is it they really? have like a starter, starter You're right. thing. I saw that. You're yeah. right. Like a starter yeah, two player. It's like a starter, like learn to play for two people kind of thing. I don't I don't know. I mean it's maybe they're worried at this point if somebody tried to get into it, they wouldn't know where to jump in. And if so, then yes, a, a learn to play box. Buy this, learn to play from it, it really holds your hand, you know? That might be a good idea. Huh. I wonder how well it's doing. I was at Disney Springs uh, a month or so ago, yeah. and at the Disney store they were selling this, and there was a sign, limit one box per customer, and I was like, wow, even here. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I know people still stand in line. I know one person still stands in line. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're standing in line with other people, so their, obviously their people are standing yeah, in line. Yeah, but he doesn't know them. None of this matters. You know next week... The new Star Wars set comes out. I'm excited about that. Yes, I've already pre-ordered it. Yay. I'm okay. excited playing your Is copy. that the third or second? Second. It's yeah, but it's Mandalorian. The two starter decks, Mandalorian. It's great. Mando? Grow yeah. goo. That's all I care about. Okay, that is the news. Hey folks, thanks for watching another one of our videos. If you like our videos, if you like our channel, you would love to game with us at one of our conventions. Check out Dice Tower Cruise, Dice Tower East, and Dice Tower West. Fantastic conventions where we play games with wonderful people, a humongous library, and lots of other events and stuff. Also, don't forget to check out our channel, like and subscribe. I'm Tom Basil.